Guys, we just could not stand El Toro looking as sad as it did for any longer. I mean, the stickers and stuff were fun, but it was time for a paint job for the little girl. So uh, I present to you. All right, I'm lying. It was all kind of clickbaity. I wanted to show you this new car. Not new car. It's actually a car that's been around for a while. It's actually part of Motion's history. El Toro 2.0. All right, guys, I decided that uh, El Toro and Dragon Drives, I just don't want to take it on sick week. I wanted something new. And a uh, perfect opportunity present our, presented itself. I'll, I'll get into the details about this car, but I want to show it to you. Uh, the OGs will remember, the people who knew me before Motion started will remember. But uh, here it is. Tom, you bring me presents? Oh my goodness. Guys, this thing is so old and so OG that it has a logo that most of you have never seen. This was the original logo when I started uh, coming up with the idea of Motion Raceworks. It says Motan. Mo what? Motan. <laughs> well, we didn't have it quite sorted out yet. Dude, I'm so excited to have this car back. You guys have no idea. This was uh, essentially the car that started motion from the beginning. Um, I sold it back in 2011 to build an ultra street purpose built race car. And uh, the same guys owned it since 2011. My buddy Greg uh, kind of became a friend of mine and he ended up living in Michigan and he's like, I'm ready to sell it. I'm like, I'm ready to buy it. So I called Tom and said, can you bring me uh, my old car back from Michigan? And he said, I guess. This is the first time a Mustang's been in your trailer? Yeah, we're trying to stay away from that. Okay. <laughs> no, I got Bronco and a Teledega. It's all right. That's true. And is it really a Mustang with a Teddy in it? I That's true. I think they did come there. factory with those. Um, yeah. At this point, I'm pretty confident. Well, we'll get this thing unstrapped. I'll quit making Tom do all the work, and uh, I'll show you guys some more. Look what's on top, though, guys. Down here a little early. You gonna do some testing while you're down here? Uh, yep, Monday. All right. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Let's see. You're trying to win your own event this year. So that's always the goal. <laughs> All right, we got it unloaded, and I'm just so excited because uh, so much of this car is still how I left it. They've changed some things. Uh, most, I mean, for the better, mostly. I mean, I, you got to remember, I built this car back in 2010 ish. Um, and then I think I sold it in 2000 and 2000, I might have built it in 2009 and then sold it in 2012 or something like that, but I can't remember the exact dates, but I can't wait to really dig into it because you know how things evolve, your skills evolve and stuff like they that. They say nostalgia, you remember the good things and forget the bad things. So I'm really interested to see some of my craftsmanship and stuff like that. But, uh, the car is absolutely gorgeous still. And uh, like I said, very much the way I left it. It has the Bogart D10s. I think they look so perfect on a notchback. Um, the cage is still the same as I had in it. The seats are still the same. The engine, uh, I actually rebuilt for, uh, the engine I actually had, uh, I got the car back shortly after I sold it. And then I did some updates to it. I put a new turbo on it and then went through the engine, all that stuff. So that's actually still the same. And then they, uh, so, but instead of me blabbering, I want to just dig into it. Um, obviously, I want to see how things are, but I'm really excited to put a bunch of new motion parts on it. This car is how motion started, and a lot of our inspiration for parts um, really started here with the build of this thing, understanding how these turbo cars work and kind of what goes into them. So it's really kind of cool to go full circle and take all of the parts that we've designed, dreamed, and built over the last number of years and... Uh, put them back on the car that started motion it's just like kind of a coming home type of thing for uh such a special car to me i love this car and i'm really looking forward to spending a week with it and i'm even more looking forward to just having it in my collection uh you know it's just one that i needed back so a little backstory on this car um i bought this thing as a roller and uh like i said before i didn't even know how a turbo worked and i'd always had like na heads cam type of cars and stuff like that and i'm like i want to dip into the turbo world so brian one of my business partners in motion and tbm uh and andy my brother who's also a business partner and i we all were just like we're gonna learn this stuff and we want to just go out and do shootouts and no time stuff and small tire race and all that stuff so we spent literally the three of us kind of like built this bond where we just worked on this thing and then 
you know, once it was built, we kind of uh, all just decided like Fridays and Saturday nights, we were all single young guys. And so we just spent our time at the racetrack learning, uh, not only how to make the suspension work, but Andy learned how to do the tuning. Uh, we were always changing things, always updating. And this thing really progressed from, yeah, I think the first time we took it to the track, it went uh, tens, I think it went like a 1040. And uh, by the end of the first year, we were like in the eights. And then we started to learn about turbo technology. So we updated turbos and, you know, learned about built wheels and boost controllers. And along the way, we met a lot of like cool people like Boost 12. Uh, he taught me how to use a boost controller on this car, uh, how to make t a proper ramp. And it's really what the foundation of Motion Raceworks was built on was this car. Uh, we failed a lot. Um, we learned, we changed things, we weren't afraid to try it because we really didn't have anything to lose. We all had day jobs. Um, we spent our nights and weekends working on it and just poured our heart and soul into it. And what we ended up with with this car, you know, you got to think about back in 2011, 12 time frame. It was a 26 inch tire car with a four bolt head, 26, uh, like I said, 26 inch tire, stock suspension. It was heavy, it weighed 3,000 pounds, and it had a single 76 millimeter T4 turbo on it. Uh, with a little 5.3 motor and just some cam that we came up with. And the thing went uh, 840s, 530s, 540s to the eighth, which is incredible for back then. I remember everybody, like we would show up on a 26 inch tire and they would laugh at us. They're like, what are you guys doing with that thing? Um, and then we'd outrun all the big tire cars around us and stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with big tire cars, but for our area in the Midwest, uh, this was really a car that kind of caught a lot of people's attention. Um, you know, we'd race king of the streets and stuff like that. but. Anyways, I won't bore you with the details. For us, this car is very much a, uh, you know, something that is a memory for us. And it essentially is how Motion started. Uh, if it wasn't for this car, there's a chance that Motion would not be around because a lot of the needs we had kind of inspired Motion. Uh, as you saw the sticker on the back from the day one, I kind of knew where this was all going and I had an idea. Of course, it took a lot of work and a lot of uh, investment and a lot of good people to make it happen. but knowing like hey i want a better catch can hey i want better valve covers i want a better shifter i want a throttle body that is shorter right you know a lower radiator support like all of it if as we go through this car you'll see a lot of the small inspirations and maybe it doesn't mean as much to you guys but it means a ton to me so i'm really excited to have it and uh it's going to be full circle i'm going to be putting new motion parts on it that were inspired by ideas from this car and really just adding it to our museum of race cars because you can never have enough uh, doesn't mean you got to work on them all, doesn't mean they all have to run, but this thing runs and we're going to put it on uh, um, a drag and drive uh, sick week. It's something I always wanted to do, but I never did with it. We did a bunch of uh, drive 100 mile style cruises and stuff like that, and it did extremely well and it was versatile, but it'll be really fun to kind of go full circle with things. So here's some pictures to look back at this thing, just kind of see the evolution of it. I never had a 28 inch tall tire on this thing or rarely did. Um, it always ran on a 26 inch tire. So the first thing we're gonna do is switch back to a 26 inch tall tire. Uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna take the wing off cause of course I wanna put my wing on it um, long-term. Uh, I always love the tinted windows on this car, but what I really loved was like the factory feel interior on this thing. It's, you know, nothing special, but it was just very clean. Still has a back seat in it. Um, I think my buddy Blaine is gonna ride in it. Uh, has a factory column. It looks like there's a couple pieces missing now, but uh, overall very much how it is. Of course, it's gonna need an operator shifter. Um, even down to the wiring, it looks like a lot of it stayed the same. They did update it with a Holley ECU. Uh, this car was always a factory ECU. We used HV tuners on it. Looks like they even got a Motion Racework CO2 bottle. So they they ended up buying a lot of parts from us, even though uh, we own they own the car. Uh, and the Bogart D10s are going to stay. That is my look. I love a Fox body, especially a notchback on Bogarts. And they're super light wheels. But other than that, I mean, it just looks like it could be any old Fox body. So I think uh, essentially um, we can probably make this thing go sevens uh, basically as it sits, applying what we know and tuning and stuff like that. Um, they did do Hot Rod Drag Week on, in 2014 with this car, so they always left that. Um, 
Besides that, man, I mean, the car very much sits how we left it. And that makes me feel good because uh, having it back and having it very similar to how we had it before, uh, it's just a cool thing. So from here, I want to go ahead and take it and take it into the TBM headquarters. And uh, I got a whole slew of parts that I'm going to update it with so that when it's on sick week, you guys can see all the display of motion parts. And uh, of course, I want to use them myself. And we'll put some TBM brakes on it and I'll show you under the hood. What's really going to be interesting is now we have the LS powered version and we have El Toro. So what's going to be faster, the Coyote or the Fox body? I already know that you Ford boys are going to say Coyote, but unfortunately, I hate to say it, but I think Pumpkin Spice is going to get a little bit more love. So this car was codenamed Pumpkin Spice by my friend Ben Ledbetter, and it just kind of stuck. The color kind of matches. It's more of like a sunset orange, but codenamed Pumpkin Spice. There's not really a whole lot of uh, backstory to it, except for I think he did it to kind of like make fun of me, you know, at one point. But I'm like, dude, I like that name. It's pretty unique. So the car is Pumpkin Spice. All right, we got the hood off this unit. And uh, other than a bigger Terpski, very much the same size as what... Everything pretty much looks about the same as when we had, don't you think, Andy? What's that? Looks about the same as when we used to work on it every It's real similar. Week, we got so. to do some updates. A little bit bigger turb ski. Yeah. yeah. This, this was a lot more compact and a lot smaller opening. But... I kind of like the smaller turbo better, to be quite honest with you. It's always cooler to do more with less than vice yeah, versa. I mean, it, was, it was a good turbo. I mean, the car went it was a bill at 7675 from Precision was what it was. Uh, this is, I believe, is an 88 millimeter turbo, which is more than enough turbo to probably break this engine. So I don't know, I might switch up the turbo uh, just to play around with some stuff and make it more class legal. Cause I don't really, we don't need an 88 and if that disqualifies us from some shootouts or classes like whatever, I don't think it's worth having. Um, plus I just never leave anything alone. Um, but other than that, I'm a little concerned because as I look around this thing, I know all the plumbing is the original plumbing, so like, what is the shelf life of AN hose? Like, you're you're talking about we're we're on 15 years probably at this point. Yeah, probably not a bad idea to maybe start running through that and pulling it out. So I think we what we might do is, uh, you know, as we upgrade some fuel system, probably just run all new AN lines. I mean, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But at the same point, it can be a safety thing. So yeah, the good thing is the car's never been on. Uh, methanol, ethanol, like that's... Uh, yeah, it's always been a... Plus, you got gas or gasoline, stuff like that, but it's got some lubrication property. Yeah, we've always had this thing on pump gas or Sunoco uh, GT104 or whatever. Um, it's always been an air-to-air -air car. So, like Andy said, it probably isn't terrible, but it's probably a good sa safety thing. And I always try to tell people, like, something you should not forget about, because... No matter what it is, it's eventually going to need replacing. So, yeah, I guess we'll dig in. I got some new valve covers. I'll show you guys what we got. Um, this throttle body uh, is going to get replaced. And uh, we're going to, have to put a new master cylinder on it, a smaller bore master because we're going to run two piston front brakes and four piston rear. That's a very big, like, inch and an eighth master. is the biggest one I could find back in the day because we had dual rear caliper brakes on this thing. This car... Remember back in the day how we staged this thing? Because it was before bump boxes and, like, all that stuff. So, basically, you get, some of you are familiar, but dual rear caliber brakes pump those suckers up and just put it on the trans brake. And when it pushed through, you just, like, grab the trans brake to make it stop in the beams and then launch it. Because there was no bump box. So, like, when you're trying to spool it up and make it go, it's about all we had. So, uh, I feel like an old guy talking about that. And maybe bump boxes were out, but they weren't very common at that point. So... Put it, on a little tire. put it on a little tire we're gonna put the single caliper rear brakes with the two piston fronts on it and uh of course now it has a uh, built-in bump function so we don't need that and uh, no reason to catch, carry the weight or have the drag of the rotors or pads or anything like that and it doesn't have tbms on it it needs tbms one thing i will mention and this is always incredible to me and we don't even sell these but these mazir pumps this thing has had so many hundreds and thousands of hours and it's of course like a 15 year old build and this pump's still good and if you do the math on the Mazir pumps how they rate them uh they're basically rated to like 100,000 miles at 55 mile an hour so it definitely hasn't had 100,000 miles on it but 
for an aftermarket water pump to be that awesome is just a it's a true test so i've i've always believed in those mazir pumps um on the engine side i love using those of course i love my davies craig for like intercooler pumps but big fan of those they don't pay me i don't have, even sell their product but i do like them and uh this car is kind of a testament to a lot of that stuff so one of the things that i'm going to do first is uh we're gonna put our billet valve covers on this uh, with internal baffling. Right now you can see it just has like a little, I think that's like 3 8 hose. Uh, it always worked fine because it's a gasoline, uh, low horsepower, you know, relatively deal. But what I, this is back in the day when I always hated this about this, it has a non-baffled catch can. So basically the lines go in and they have immediate access to the filter. So you can see it's all oily and stuff like that. So I wanna do, our baffled valve covers with a good catch can, our new, our top loader catch can because it's baffled. And uh, then we don't have to worry about that oil just making a mess and getting on the tires and stuff like that. Plus it's our, our parts, but uh, that'll be a good first upgrade. And of course we have uh, our coil brackets, which will hold these coils. Probably not even gonna change them because of, it's one of those things like if it's not broke, don't fix it. All right. So we got the uh, our billet valve covers on. Um, remember, they're all baffled. What's really nice about these valve covers is obviously this car has stock coils on stock valve covers before. So we were able to use our multi-fit kit and put them right back on here. But um, if you aren't familiar with these valve covers, they held on by bolts that uh, hold on up here on the top. So if in like a few months or a year and I wanna switch over and put the coils down low or something like that, I can unbolt them and you have a clean valve cover, which I might do, who knows? Uh, so I also took the old catch can out and uh, I'm going to get the top loader one put in there, our billet catch can. So this is essentially like stuff I just love doing because we're, it obviously worked how it was somewhat and it was fine for 10 years, but now we just got nicer parts to put on everything and uh, the routing will be a lot cleaner, uh, nicer lines and really watching our dreams kind of come to life as we're putting parts on the car. Red, I need to ask you some questions about a Ford Mustang. What kind of Mustang question? <laughs> we got a guest appearance here. When did Big Box Chevrolet drop in that unit? <laughs> so, uh, Red flew in for US Street, and uh, were you excited to see they actually had paint on it this time? Yeah, I mean, I walked in and was like, dude, El Toro got the makeover. Spiced her up a little yeah, bit. El Toro got the makeover. I don't know what to do. Now, we got to carry cleaning supplies yeah. you know before we didn't carry cleaning supplies we weren't worried about that yeah um, well we can replace we need that where we was going now we got a buff and wax and we can replace time and chains with cleaning supplies sure spend sure. some spark plugs you know that'll offset the budget i'm pumped it's always cool to get back an old relic like this you know what i mean yeah what's it's it something i really think it's something that everybody dreams about how many people do you talk to to say i used to have i used to have i used to have it's cool to say I used to have, and I got it back. You know what I mean? Yeah. And what's really cool is we can apply what me and you know yep. about race cars, yeah. which we both collectively make it, learn. Make you it know. better, but don't make it something it's not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, don't change what it yeah. is. But, don't make it something it's not. But let's see what we can, you know, step on the gas a little bit and take yeah. some applied knowledge and make it, you know, go a little faster or smoother or be more consistent, whatever. Sure. sure. Have fun with it. Yeah. But, I mean, full interior, so... Probably a few less leaks than El Toro. Yep, it's a four-seater. Four-seater. It's a four-seater. We're going to have a special guest in the back seat, likely. Oh, man. Yeah, he's putting in banker's hours. What you got to say, Tom? I forgot oh, you were going to say something. I don't something. want to break it out. I don't want to break it out. <laughs> How come your dyno video didn't show no 4,500 horsepower? I didn't give it all the boost. Oh, okay. All right. That's what I would have said. Low boost. It's a low boost setting. Low boost tune up. We've all ran them. <laughs> low boost mean? tune up. Low pounds. boost, soft and easy. We've all ran them. I can understand. <laughs> all right. I Man, just... I had to get the video camera out because you've been yeah. talking about it all day. Yeah. I can't wait to see Tom. Well, I'm going to give him so said, much hard. Tom's motorhome's parked in the shop. I was like, why did his car make 4,500 horsepower on the dyno? Well, I thought that's what all turbo got, cars make. On you got to make them street cars live. You can't give I it guess. all right away. I mean, know? you might be right. You might be right. I don't know anything about that. So, a lot of hero right. passes going on on those dinos lately. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we got our uh, top loader catch can mounted. Like I said, 
no more oil on that filter. And uh, if you haven't seen this thing before, the best part about it is it has a clockable. So we could turn it this way, we could turn it this way. Um, because our new cold side's gonna run along here, we'll do kind of sneak the hoses this way. Um, so I'm basically, I need to get a 120 degree fitting for here and here. That way we can kind of just shoot it here and then uh, tuck one back. So got the icon going on right now with the 90 degree elbow. So that's just gonna shoot the pipe down and over here. So we will have a little bit of fabrication work, but it's all in the name of showing off all the parts we've made in the last 10 years, right Andy? That's right. We 100% don't need any of this stuff. Obviously it ran before, but I mean, if you can, why not? Red has got the old shifter out um, and we are getting ready to put in the new operator. Got some orange grips on this unit. So this is our three speed uh, Turbo 400 shifter with air assist. Um, it was already plumbed for air, so we should be all set as far as that. I just need to get a Deutsch connector and hook the um, line lock button, train brake button stuff back up. But other than that, that should be going here together very shortly. And then the final thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna pop the intake off, put one of our swanky billet valley covers on. And then our four port steam kit, this thing still has the factory style, um, which is fine, but uh, I think we can clean it up with a, nice, with a nice little AN hose and then, you know, our kit's quite nice. So it'd be a shame to not be running it. And then finally, we're gonna replace all the sensors in the car with our trusty new 100 PSI pressure transducers. These will actually go right in place of the ones that are on there. A zero to five volt sensor typically is all scaled the same, but if it's not, if you want to double check it, we got these QR codes, so you can actually scan it. Uh, it'll take you right to the calibration page so you can just verify things are, but um, I know I can count on these sensors. So we're definitely gonna, with the miles and uh, abuse this thing's about to get, something we're gonna need where we're going. And let's face it, it's becoming a motion catalog that is up to date. I mean, the old one is like a printed three ring binder, you know, catalog. This one is a laminated hard copy, you know, Bible of race car parts. All right. Um, I think it's like a good stopping point. We got the U.S. Street Nationals to go to. Yep. Check out some racing. So I'll leave you with this update. Um, we're ready to do some fabrication here. Waiting on a couple fittings. And believe it or not, we do not have them just in our back pocket at TBM. Uh, got some Rife sensors on there. Engine Bay is looking really up to date with 2022. And uh, yeah, we'll leave you some videos from U.S. Street and obviously more coming because we don't have much time. Because sick week right behind you. Sick week 2022 is in less than two weeks. 23. 23. <laughs> Welcome to 23. Yeah, I kind of forgot what year it was. But uh, I think what we're going to end up doing is putting a new converter and a new transmission in it. Because we know what we need uh, based off of this. We got a lot of data and they're very similar cars. And uh, I'm talking with Red. There's no reason to struggle all week. We know what needs updated before we even head there. So we'll get that. A plan in motion for that, although we don't know exactly what that is right now. But we're running out of time, so I'll be back at it, and then I'll try and push out videos uh, at least a couple times a week for the next week or so, because we need to also get this thing tested. Um, the tune-up was not ideal, and uh, we got some fuel issues too. But we know this stuff. This one's easy. Coyote, not my cup of tea. This one... I think we can try not to get lost on it. So we'll see you next time, guys.